Hello. Welcome back to another Pen Talk. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for following my journey. It's fun to have company. This video is going to look at a pen which has a very interesting story behind it. I did a review on a vintage pen that was called Peerless. And I found a reference to Cross that made a Peerless pen, but obviously the two were not related. Uh, the term Peerless seems to have a little bit of use within the pen community. And one of my viewers quite generously offered to send me a Cross Peerless pen. He had a few of them, and this was the one that he used the least. So I said, absolutely. And I received it in a couple days, which was very nice because uh, many of my orders in this current environment that we're in are just sitting in limbo for weeks at a time with no updates to tracking. So this came through very quickly and, and, and came through in really excellent shape. So let's take a look at what I received. A nice high-end cross box because this is the highest end pen that cross is currently making easier to read when it's right side up you know the identification and definitely states uh, made in China there's some more identification on this end and what I really appreciate is um, the previous owner kept all the packaging intact including this label across the end and some uh, different languages there so the main presentation box just slides out of the sleeve and i think the sleeve is mainly there for protection i think most people would discard the sleeve so we see embossed in a in a gold tone color the cross logo the name and then there's some embossing here on the side which also is similar to that logo design nice black and gold more i'd say more on a yellowish gold side but certainly in that family of colors the top is hinged so it comes off and we see a nice protective foam pad again all the packaging was retained by the original owner we have your common booklet here in the top of the cap, just held in by elastic. Underneath that is another nice design motif. Again, they're promoting the 1846. As this is their, you know, flagship model pen, one would expect that. And here's the pen. And sitting in that black velvet, it is certainly an impressive looking writing instrument. You know, it slips out, held down by some um, rubber elastic. And the first impression to me when I pick up the pen is I expected it to be heavier than it is. It's not a light pen, but I think because of the size, you know, you're kind of expecting something with a little bit of weight to it. It looks like it's made out of metal. It certainly is for somebody who enjoys that color of gold. It's a 23 karat heavy electroplate. It just feels good in the hand. It's not slippery. It's, it's just the right texture. They put a jewel in the top of the cap finial, a Swarovski crystal, which I think I could have done without, but you know, that's, I don't, I don't think this pen was made for somebody like me. As much as I enjoy cross pens, and I have I have a few, and mostly in the Townsend series, and we'll compare this to Townsend, which it is also compared to in the cross literature and description. The cap unscrews with just slightly over two turns, and it feels good. It has that nice feel that you get when the threads are ex expertly machined and, and fit together 
extremely well and we'll see probably the highlight of this pen is the 18 karat gold nib made by sailor we'll see that distinctive sailor shaped plastic feet on the back this is a fine uh, they have the nice enamel there in the bottom of the barrel again identifying it as a cross peerless it is ergonomically just about perfect for me the weight of this feels just right it's weighted towards the nib which is what i think uh, works well for for my writing i think this is a pen you could easily write with for days it does post and it posts securely with a little bit of a snap and that certainly throws the weight of the whole pen to higher than I'm comfortable with but for those of you that need to post and must post that's certainly something you can do and the cap takes a deliberate effort to remove there's no way that caps coming off without some effort on your part the barrel unscrews as one would expect and we see that standard cross converter proprietary design underneath of this velvet bed is uh, two cartridges and some other openings which may have been where the converter was uh, initially when the pen was uh, <coughs> packaged and sent out the converter screws in which is something that's always nice with a high-end pen and there's that long section here that seats very very well into the back of the feed uh, so it's it's well designed there's an identifying number on the section here I think that's coming out so it's you know again this pen lists for six hundred dollars uh the discounters are selling it for around 450. you can buy this pen in black on amazon for 280 so to me the real pleasure of the pen i think is going to be the nib there's been a couple uh, i think very good reviews by gourmet pens and fig boots i'll give you that those links above or below depending upon <laughs> where you're where you're at and watching this video so we're going to do some comparisons and uh put a sailor ink in here and see how that nib performs i think we have to have mr crab and i didn't say mr frog which i do on more than one occasion hold up the pen for your visual entertainment and see how the light plays across the engravings on the barrel and cap a kind of a cross hatch engraving and the light plays off the shiny bits on the end of the barrel and the cap finial and the clip and the little band so visually not necessarily my taste but i certainly can appreciate the look of the pen the classic design the extremely well made that it is so we're going to let uh, Mr. Crab come around one more time, show you the pen, and then we'll dive back in to the review. We need to look at this cap a little bit more closely under a little bit different light. Light certainly changes the way things look there is what appears to be a serial number at the top of the cap very finely engraved the crystal shows up nice and i did use a nice soft brush to clean out the dirt to build up in that cavity there but uh, certainly this shows off the design detail that went into the making of this pen and we need our LED light to take a look at the inside of the cap. There's like a double pl 
plastic liner in there. One is this liner which has the threads which facilitate capping against the metal threads on the barrel. And then down there we have a nice white cap liner that works as an excellent seal. You can see those ledges in there that snap on to that metal band at the end of the section. And we'll play a little bit of the light here across the cap. Just again, so you can appreciate that interesting pattern and this very good looking cap. So Cross references the Townsend as one of the inspirations for the design of the Peerless. So I brought out my Townsend. This pen was actually a daily carry of mine for probably almost a year. Eventually I stopped carrying it because the weight of the pen really didn't work in a nice thin business shirt because I used to actually put pens in pockets back then before I got into putting them in pen sleeves and, and you know nice little not carrying cases. But there are a lot of similarities, you know, the, the way the top of the cap is formed. Again, the dimensions are different, but the design elements are there. In addition to the same design elements down at the bottom of the barrel. You know, a different design, obviously, of the clip and you know, different cap bands. But to me, having, you know, worked in in retail and design and manufacturing and you know I, I am impressed with the ability of them taking design elements that are standard cross design elements and putting them into a, an upscale format and creating a, a top-of-the-line pen but still staying true to their roots so that I appreciate they make mention and, and support the fact that this was designed in, in the United States. They still have an office up in Providence, Rhode Island. And if you have any concerns about the quality and it's a lifetime uh, warranty on the pen, then that's where you would communicate with in regards to any type of service that you might need. So that's nice. The fact that the pen is made in China, those of you that follow my channel should know that that doesn't have any impact on me one way or the other. Uh, they do make a lot of pens and they do make a large variety of pens. They do not make many pens of the level and quality of the Peerless, but obviously I think what this pen shows is given the right incentive, given the right uh, market, they could certainly make pens, you know, of that high-end quality. From, from my perspective, they're more into producing um, volume uh, rather than going for a high-end limited market. But who knows what they may evolve into over time. And they, you know, they even you know, mimicked here just a little dimple there. It's the crystal. So it's, it's, just, it's just nice. This has a pull-off cap, and for some reason I expected this to have a pull-off cap, and I'm certain from an engineering viewpoint they decided to thread it so it seals correctly. There's a nice plastic liner inside. But I thought it would be good to compare a sailor nib with a cross nib, which is a very classic uh, cross nib design here. If we flip them over, we'll see the differences in the feeds. But both nibs have their interest and attraction. 18 carat is not a standard carat used by Sailor. Uh, most of the nibs that they do make in 18 carats are their kind of inlaid nibs for their pocket style pens, you know, kind of like uh, Pilot does. But I thought you would find it interesting and also that same you know, uh, metal ring at the bottom of the section, which I think also facilitates the capping and sealing of, of that nib in a, in a similar black section, but obviously much more girth to the Peerless. Being an upscale pen, it expected to be bigger. 
We also need to compare the Peerless with the Cross Century, which is the iconic cross design which has been around since the 30s. This is the one of the later versions, well, probably 40 years old, but one of the later versions of the ballpoint had the twist expel mechanism, which was excellent. These pens last forever, and the refills are great. But, I mean, that size differential is just unbelievable. Uh, I can't imagine uh, two pens having that much of a, of a difference and still, again, having some of that design elements in common, but I certainly feel the Peerless has much more in common with the Townsend design. Since it's compared to Sailor Nibs, these are the two Sailors that I took out of my collection. This is a Pro Gear, the full-size Pro Gear. You know, the next level up is King of Pens, and here's just a 1911 standard. So this has a 14 karat nib and a 21 karat nib, which is what Sailor uses in most of their pens. Let's uncap them and compare those nibs to the one they put in the cross. So here we have the three nibs. We'll line them up uh, there at the section. So you can see that that 18 karat nib has a similar size but certainly shaped differently than what's on the pro gear which is the 21 karat nib you can see the difference in the colors and the 14 karat nib is on the 1911 standard you flip them over you'll see how those feeds are very similar yeah again uh, sailor makes some phenomenal nibs this is a nagatagi togi nib pretty substantial gusher if you hear some strange noises in the background, we have an intense storm coming through right now, so uh, it's rattling the uh, screens and, and blowing pretty good. But I just thought that would be comparisons, and definitely you cannot remove the sailor influence and lineage that Cross has on their nib. In deciding what ink to use, this one I think will fit the bill. As you can see, I add my own labeling to it on the top as I store it, so I can only see the top. Yes, this is Yamadori Aqua Pheasant Ink. I've had it for a while. As you can see, it's at 2016. The color card shows it's a, a dark teal on the blue-sided teal. No real sheen. Some people, I think, have talked about sheen on Sailor inks, but not something I've seen in, in any normal use of inks. The chromatography shows uh, blue with a decent amount of black in it. And I think at the very top here, you can see some kind of red sheen coming out. So, yes, it is possible. Let's see how it looks in the pen. This is, this is on the high side of any pen I've ever bought. And it does have some great features to it. But one of the things that I explored when I first inked it up and started writing with it, I expected a little bit more consistency in the writing. <clears throat> I expected uh, this, the strokes. I mean, it, it has that sailor feedback. It feels like a... A nice uh, kind of medium soft pencil. The nib didn't quite feel as perfect as I expected it to feel. <clears throat> so I looked at the tines under a loop and they're aligned and everything but the grind is not symmetrical. There's more tipping material to the right side of that nib or the upper part of the nib than there is to the lower part. I'm hoping maybe the camera can pick that out. But that to me is not a good QC sign from Sailor making these nibs. Of course, there's another part of me that says maybe the hand grinding on this nib, they decided to do that. And I have seen that in other nibs, but I attribute that to lack of QC, not a design trait. I can't imagine why one would want that to be unsymmetrical. And I notice it most on the upstrokes and certain angles, you'll feel that that 
thinner tip will dig into the paper, bend a little bit more. It's, and I'm being really nitpicky, but then this is a $600 pen. If it was a $20 pen, like most pens I are familiar with, then I wouldn't be as picky. And also, I wouldn't do anything to this nib to try to, you know, smooth it out. You really can't correct that imbalance. I think I've meandered around enough and added enough, I think, relevant content to this review. And I've had this pen for a while, and I've written it with it um, a fair amount. And I think now it's time to show you how it writes and give you my opinions. For those that have used Sailor pens, to me, this is definitely a Sailor nib. It has that distinctive a Sailor feedback. So you really feel the texture of the paper you're writing on. Uh, this is even a little bit more than I would prefer, uh, but uh, it certainly is a uh, very common trait of uh, Sailor nibs. This nib is also a little soft, so it has a nice bounce. You can see it puts out a decent amount of ink. You know, your horizontal strokes can be fairly fine. Your vertical strokes can be fairly fine. You put a little bit of pressure on it, it opens up. And that that's a decent amount of line variation and the feed certainly keeps up well with the nib. As I said in uh, my review of this nib, there is just a little bit of inconsistency and again I'm being very nitpicky but I expect this nib to be phenomenally perfect. Uh, so I need to provide those viewers that might consider spending this amount of money on a pen whether they're going to be happy with it or not. So one of the things that I've learned over my many years of using fountain pens is that my enjoyment of using a pen is completely independent of the value and cost of the pen. I've never been one that's been enamored or blinded by Oh, this is great, you know, because it's expensive. Um, growing up without any money certainly teaches you that the money that you do have and that you do spend, you got to make certain that you get the most return on that. And buying a luxury good was, was never one that was part of my nature. And now that I may have some additional funds that are discretionary, it still hasn't changed my view on, on that. <clears throat> so... Is this a nice pen? Yes. Does it write consistently well? Absolutely. Is it a pen you could live with day in and day out? Yes, you can. It feels good in the hand, which is one of those traits that I would say does have somewhat of a relationship to cost, but not necessarily so. I mean, you could spend $200 for an injection molded pen or you can spend $20 for a turned acrylic pen, and, and in my hand, that turned acrylic pen feels substantially better than the injection molded pen, even if it is made out of precious resin. Nice marketing term. So now we're going to have to rate this pen. And this is a difficult one for me because the ratings are my subjective opinion based on all the pens that I write with and use. Where does this pen fit in to that range? 
And I'm going to give it a 9.0. And it gets one check for the nib. Even with those imperfections, it's still a nice nib and it's still an enjoyable writing experience. It's just not phenomenal. I'm not going to go through the details because, you know, the engineering, construction, and everything else is perfect. I'd say the design, this pen comes in many finishes and many colors and many materials. So just judging this on its own, I would say that it's, it's not a finish that I would choose. But again, uh, for someone uh, spending a lot of money and wants a bling, you know, an item that if you're using in your office and you whip it out, um, people might say, wow, it's big, it's shiny, it's golden. Uh, but that's not something that uh, <clears throat> floats my boat nowadays and, and never did. So enough of this. Um, I'd like to thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed this. You know, I'm very pleased to, to have a great audience that is engaged with my videos. Um, I've gotten some, some very uh, nice feedback from many of you on, on how um, my videos provide you with some entertainment, some enjoyment, some diversion in the current situation that we're in where we're all pretty much quarantined to home. And I did go out yesterday, the first time in about six days, uh, to do my grocery shopping, took my list, uh, was able to get everything that I needed uh, relatively quickly, and that was, that was always nice. And I did have a very nice homemade mask. And one of the things that made my day yesterday was getting a delivery of black elastic so we can make more masks. And here's a picture of the elastic and the masks and the fabric. So... It's funny that, you know, six months before if someone said that that was going to be your high point of, of a day, then I would have been very skeptical, but obviously I would have been wrong. So do the best you can. Help your neighbors, help your friends, help your society. Help everyone get through this, and hopefully you can get through this too. We'll all uh, look back upon this hopefully with a lot of things that we've learned and, and hopefully things that we could do better. So take some ink, put it on some paper, find a pen to facilitate that and share your thoughts with others, which I'm certain they would very much appreciate. That's the end of this video. You know, as the pen starts up right away, I've never had any issues with flow or starting or or anything, and that Sailor Ink does work well with this, with this pen, which is what I, I expected. So you're going to say bye for now. Stay safe, stay healthy, and most importantly, stay happy.